Hey everyone, how's it going? So, um, I've got this uh, this new 3D printer here. It's a Creality Halo 1 CL60. So I think it's got like a 127 by like 80 by 160 mil uh, build volume. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been pretty good. It's been definitely a steep learning curve. So um, I saw a couple of reviews before I got it, and uh, someone mentioned that the thing moves in the Z axis quite slowly, and uh, apparently that has been. Uh, uh, patched. Uh, it's not the fastest thing in the world, but yeah, it definitely goes faster than what showed in the video. So as for the learning curve, um, one of my, the first problem that I encountered was Halots, um, or Creality at least, uh, their slicing software uh, isn't that great, or whatever they call it. Uh, I'll have like a little icon. Uh, that didn't work so well, so for some reason when I was importing my files for like building the support, uh, to generate the supports and to slice it uh, so that I could print it to convert it to like a DCPH or whatever um, proprietary format this thing uses. For some reason, I would uh, put the USB in here like this. This USB cable is currently not functional. I'll put the uh, USB in, upload the file, and begin the print. But the build um, bed itself, it would just print nothing. It would be empty, right? And I don't mean like a, um, it would build something that, and it would get stuck to the base of the tray or it would build something and it would fail. I mean, the build bed was just empty after the entire print. Then I switched to Lime Chi Slicer. That problem went away. Um, also, it's worth noting, I was trying, uh, I did have a failure where something got stuck to the base and instead of taking the build thingy off and sort of flexing the membrane um, or the PET or the, the PET or the FET or whatever they call it um, and sort of peeling the thing off, I used a little scraper and poked a very small hole in the very first one that they provided. Fortunately, they give you a spare. I also messed that one up though during the installation, I didn't make it tight enough. So it was extremely floppy, so my prints were garbage, and it leaked. Um, so, um, yeah, you want that thing extremely tight, almost like when you tap it, it's just effectively a drum. So I managed to work out those um, those things. I saw someone also say, um, for first problems, or first mistakes, rookie mistakes, when, uh, when they have a 3D printer, they don't tighten this little clamp here on the top, and I was like, oh, who would ever make that mistake? It's sort of like a, in PC building, where it's like, don't forget to peel the thing off the... Um, protective cover off of your uh, your water block or put the IO shield in the back thing and it's like oh well who would forget to do that immediately um, immediately forgets another problem I've been having is um, flat surfaces become a little wavy and uh, I'm not really sure why I think I have some examples um, I have quite a few failures and quite a few successes so here I try to make this allen key holder and as you can see I tried twice and both times, one of the problems was it got a little round at the top here, I don't know why. My first thinking was um, maybe I could just flatten these down and it wouldn't be such a big deal. Second problem was um, these are the waves that I was talking about, I don't know if you can really see that, but uh, there are these sort of ripples throughout the thing and I haven't really figured out how to fix that problem yet, I still get it in a few prints. Basically every print that has large um, thingies. Maybe it would go away if I print it like this. I'm not sure. Um, and I thought, oh, well, all of that is fine. Um, not such a big deal. But unfortunately, because of the tolerances, like I measured the exact si size of the thing for the first one. I think it was this one. And then nothing fit. And I was like, okay, well, let me add some extra space. Uh, and I printed another one, and then nothing fit again. And I was like, all right, I'm done. So maybe I'll use these for something else, because, you know, it's still essentially a block of plastic. Um, that I can uh, conform it to whatever I needed to. Next, um, this is a, another good demonstration of those ripples. I try to print this little bolt. As you can see, I stopped halfway through, so there's no um, no head, but it's got a, a little kink in it. Um, this is an example of when it sort of broke away from the rest of the mold. This is supposed to be flat like this, and was actually supposed to continue and seal off over here. So it would have been flat over here, and then a little opening over here, and then flat over here. This was supposed to mount to a, um, a wall plate, effectively like this. This is where I would poke my finger in for the, uh, the switch, and then this would be covered to help keep the plug uh, in place. In South Africa here, we have three pins, so this is a nice good amount of surface area um, to just push down the socket. And um, also, again, with tolerances, I try to make a nut and a bolt. I set the nut and the bolt size to be exactly the same. And um, I was like, oh, if I create threading and I model the threading so that it actually prints the threading, you know, and I set it to 3.5.
and then I set the nut to 3.5 millimeter. That means the hole will be should be set to accept a 3.5 millimeter bolt, and then the bolt will be 3.5 millimeters. That's how it sounded in my brain, but it didn't really work out that way, and none of the bolts fitted in any of the nuts, and um, it didn't really be necessary anyway. That was for um, a clamp, a hose clamp that I wanted to do. Uh, so those were some of the problems. Some of the one of the other things that I printed now is uh, this. This is supposed to be to the dimensions of a TR4 slash SP3 socket um, or bracket, um, yeah, socket for uh, for a motherboard because I've got a water block, but it's not TR4 compatible and it doesn't have a bracket in it either. So I was like, oh, I'll print this bracket and make my own. As you can see, I haven't implemented that. I actually have a lot of 3D prints coming um, that I planned to sort of make upgrades to my server and things like that. Like I've got a pretty good idea for a, um, a hot swappable hard drive mount system because you know those chassis, those uh, rack mount chassis that uh, have hot swap bays in them are kind of pricey plus to ship it, oof, um, it's not really worth it but uh, if I can sort of make my own system that'll be great. Uh, I do have, will have some limitations obviously because it's such a small build volume so I'll have to be smart about that and um, the upside though is it's quite strong stuff so I try to drill into one of these because the first set of clamps that I mount, um, designed the bolts were too big for the holes and I didn't want to buy a smaller bolts so I just drilled the holes bigger and um, it took a, a good minute to drill through um, the uh, maybe 15 millimeters tall I think it was so um, so that's worth noting as you can see I just finished a print this is also for my server I, um, I have a little HP computer that just sits at the bottom, it's not on a shelf, and I have two blocks of wood that sit underneath it uh, to sort of keep it propped up just the right level. Um, unfortunately, it's like just that too much, too big. What I just made were these little stands that are um, supposed to, they'll be flipped vertically like that, and then it'll sit on top, on top, and on top, and on top. Um, so I still need to take those out. As you can see, there are some waves right there, right there, right there, right there, and right there in this one as well. So uh, it'll even happen over kind of a small area. Maybe I should just pl print an entire flat tray on, um, on my build bed, uh, bed and look at the uh, pattern of the ripples and see if I can equate that to there being any kind of a problem. As for resin, I'm using this um, E-Sun Standard Black. I was gonna get the water washable stuff, but then I was like, oh, I'm a noob, so I'll just buy some alcohol. I've been using a rag and a sponge and a spray bottle of alcohol to clean. I don't have a cleaning station yet, um, and I probably won't get one for a while. They're quite, they're basically as much as this printer costed me, so, so I'm gonna be cleaning my hand for a while. Uh, maybe I'll get the water washable stuff, and as you can see, I've got these nice glass trays here. So maybe I can fill them with water and then wash in the water and then just let the water, uh, let the water sit out. The water will evaporate and leave the, behind the debris. So I went through this entire bottle um, of standard black and then I got a big chunk of one. So, and then uh, I've also made myself a little UV drying box. I'll include some pictures. It's basically just a cardboard box. I cut a hole in the top and I stuck a UV bulb um, on top and I lined the thing with, I didn't even have tin foil lying around, but I had um, these little chocolate things that were wrapped in tin foil. So I unwrapped them all, ate them all, uh, and then lined them with that tin foil. Uh, they were basically frozen, so the tin foil was basically just tin foil. So it's red on one side and then tin foil on the other. That was, um, and then I ran out of tin foil, so, um, so I just used paper. I mean, it's white, so it's about as reflective as it gets besides actually being reflective. So besides the rippling, and uh, Creality's slicer being kind of rubbishy, and um, obviously I can't get the wireless printing because I edit from a wired desktop, so honestly it really would be nice if... Oh, and a, um, another problem that I noticed with the, the prints is when I printed those clamps and uh, tightened them down, after a while I saw micro cracks going down the sides of the faces, right, because I guess there's just enough pressure for it. So what I did was I triangulated them so it was like a little rectang uh, rectangular base for those two triangles and then I came to a single vertice with like one, two, three, four faces. 
uh, five if you count the base. Um, and I did that on each side and the cracking has gone away. So I don't know, you could connect to this thing over the local area network through my LAN port. Um, like I didn't just need a Wi-Fi card. I have a Wi-Fi card, I installed it and uh, it didn't really show up. So I have this USB cable, maybe I'll, uh, but I haven't tested it yet. I wanted to get right into printing um, or to testing it. Anyway, so um, if I can't figure out that ripple problem, I wouldn't recommend it because I, I feel like if you're printing like smaller models and things like that, um, you might be able to escape uh, because you would sort of fall between the thing. But when you're doing these flat surfaces, you know, it's not an injection molder. I was really hoping it would be basically as good, but because of these ripples and because of the tolerances, like I mentioned with the Allen key um, situation, um, yeah, it's uh, for making actual parts. Mm. So definitely based on what you're printing, you'll have to consider the the boundaries and the limitations of this device. Uh, um, and then now for, for my bin of shame, this is what I call, you can call this the bin of shame or the bin of learning curve. So um, this is the two fets that I broke. Oh no, I've just sort of been chucking everything down here. So these were the two ones that I broke. And then here are some filters that the thing includes. And then I have a broken toothbrush in down here. And here are all of the props and all of my fails. You can see this structure was from that um, outlet thing that I was showing you earlier, that outlet cover that I wanted to make. You can see why I didn't try, try it again because this is just a tiny piece of, um, of the thing. Like, honestly, some of these look really cool, but it's, um, it's quite sad. I've probably spent uh, quite a bit of cash in, um, in my learning curve. So, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't call the resin cheap, um, but it also doesn't cost like, you know, a small fortune a bottle, but yeah, definitely uh, not exactly the, uh, the cheapest stuff. So if you're using, if you want to use your 3D printer for making models and shit, um, or making like small models, um, that you plan to paint and stuff like that, making little figurines, um, you'll probably be okay. If you're looking for it to like make parts, um, in terms of durability, I, this ESUN stuff has been kind of durable, except for that cracking thing that I mentioned um, in the clamps. But as for like snapping and bending, uh, it's quite resilient, extremely drill, drill resilient.